Hey everyone, you're watching Refashion Series, episode 13, the Meta Denim Dress. This skirt is another piece that I inherited from my grandmother, Meta Christensen, when she passed away. It's denim, it's a peasant skirt, it has an old elastic so it doesn't quite stay up like it used to, and it has lots and lots and lots of potential. And this is what I turned it into, a sweetheart neckline dress with lots of darts for fitting, an invisible zipper, and two different layers of the skirt. Let's go ahead, let's get started with the many alterations. Now for this video, I tried to show you a little bit more of the process, so it's gonna be a little bit longer than my usual. The first step here is removing the hem, sorry, the blind hem that my grandmother had put in to make it a little bit shorter. So I'm just seam ripping along that so I can get the full extent of the fabric and have the most possible fabric that I could work with. After this point, I decided to cut each tier separately, and to do that, I cut the side seam first so I could lay it flat. Once it was laid flat, I grabbed my scissors and I began cutting just right beneath the seam where the fabric is gathered. And you can see as I'm pulling it apart that the fabric's getting wider and wider because of all those gathers. This was the point when I decided, originally I was gonna make a skirt, but at this point when I seen all the fabric I had to work with, I decided I wanted to try and make a dress. Dresses are my favorite thing to make, mainly because they're my favorite thing to wear. They require like little thought because you just throw it on and you're all the way dressed. It's not like, oh I need pants and a shirt and all this other stuff. Anyway, so I tried to cut that with my rotary cutter just barely, it didn't work so well. So I went back to using my scissors and I'm almost done. But once I finished separating these tiers, I decided to get rid of the waistband too because it wasn't really going to fit in with my design. So I planned on setting it aside for later in case I did find a place to use it. But in the end I didn't, so I ended up just tossing it. But here I am just cutting it in case I decide I could use it somewhere else on my finished piece. Oh, and I decided to remove the tag because I don't need that. So here's what it looks like after they're all separated. There's so much fabric to work with, but I need to be careful and make sure I have enough to create a bodice. To do this, I'm whipping out a quick sew pattern, and I will go ahead and reference this pattern in the description so you can tell which one it is. But I'm cutting my biggest pieces first to make sure I have enough fabric to make the full dress, because it takes a surprising amount of fabric to make a bodice more than you would think. So I'm cutting that out to make sure that I have it. Here's all the pieces for the pattern that I just used, it's fitted to me. So I was able to get those all cut out. And this is what I'm left for the waist and the skirt. So it might be a little tight. We'll have to see if we have enough to create some tiers of the skirt and also a fitted waist piece. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes, huh? I'm gonna make the bodice first and then um, when that's on, I'll pin up the layers of skirt and work it in. Okay, so here's the front piece of the Sweetheart bodice. And I didn't have like enough to make the interfacing because I want enough fabric as possible to make the skirt. So I just had this scratch fabric out and I'm gonna do this as my interfacing. And so this is the right side. And what I will do is I will just stick it on here like this, following the pattern directions. I mean, sorry, it's hard to do with one hand while I'm holding the camera, but. I'll stitch along here and then clip it, flip it over and then sew on top. So I'll show you after I clip it and, and before I um, top stitch on the top. Okay, so I just stitched that on. You can kind of see the line here. I'm going to carefully follow the directions of my pattern right here. I am going to clip the, well, I'm gonna trim the seam allowance and then I'm gonna clip it so that it can turn. And when I flip it right side out, we will sew over the top. So it's gonna look like this. I might be trimming it like a little bit too far, you guys. <gasps> but it's okay, life will go on. Let's see. Yeah, I definitely clipped that in a little far. It might be a little hard to stitch over, but um, we shall see. Can you tell that I'm not professionally trained? 
<laughs> and then we will flip it in and we'll obviously need to press it too. So kind of, there's like the sweetheart line right there. And I'll press it and then when it looks nice, we sew over the top to keep this interfacing in the back. Okay guys, it didn't go so hot with that first one, so I went ahead and I did it again. You can, I don't know if you can tell that I have two different lines. So hopefully this one's better. When I pressed it last time, it just wasn't very good. So I kind of winged it with my fabric marker and tried it again. So we will see how this looks when I pre press it. <laughs> so much better this time, you guys, so much better. I also like the fading lines from where this was whoop, part of the gathered skirt. It gives it kind of a cool color to it. Okay, so when I meant stitch this, I meant understitching, you guys. Don't mind me. So understitching, for those of you that don't know, it's where you stitch the seam allowance to the interfacing so it doesn't roll over to the right side of the fabric and show up underneath your clothing. And then, and that's kind of a big deal, especially since I'm using interfacing, like fabric scraps, because I don't want to waste my denim material. So I definitely don't want this showing up because it will show up really well if it's sticking out. And then I have my two side pieces now of my bodice. They go up to the shoulders. I'm going to stitch those on and then stitch the shoulder seams to the back pieces and then sew the interfacing for the neckline from the front to the back. So that's where, that's where we're at right now. Okay guys, here's that sweetheart neckline. It's understitched, it's just kind of needs to be pressed. And then I kept cutting the wrong pieces for this and then I realized I was cutting the wrong size and then I cut the fabric the wrong way and you know what? I don't care, it's just gonna go inside. So even though these are like, this is the wrong side and this is the right side, whatever, it's gonna be inside. So I just finished these. I have to um, understitch them and then I will just press them in and then we'll be ready to do the side seams and get working on the skirt and the zipper. Oh, and there's darts in the back too, but I'm gonna wait to do those. To get the right fit, I'm pinning where my seam allowance is for my invisible zipper and then I'm adding the darts in the back this is my adjustable dress form that I just bought. So if I pin it to fit this, it will fit me perfectly. So it's a really nice time saver. I bought the cheapest one on Amazon. It's super lightweight and I've really enjoyed it so far, but it's, yeah, right here, it's really helping me to get the right size darts in the back. And I'm gonna make some more adjustments a little bit later on, but this is where I started before I went ahead and attached the skirt. Okay, so I just sew together the bottom two layers and I'm going to make more of a pencil skirt shape instead of an A-line and right now I'm just going to go ahead and serge down my seam to finish it and then I'm going to try and shape it using this skirt I made last week. I'm going to use that shape to help me shape how I want this skirt to fit. Here I have attached the skirt with my clips I've added a couple darts to make it line up exactly with the bodice. So there's a dart here. I've created another dart on the side where it meets the side seam and I went all the way around to ensure that it fits perfectly. I will now sew it on and then serge over it. Okay, just adding the invisible zipper. I just sewed and surged this on. I still need to press it, but I'm getting really close. I've made a couple adjustments because this was sitting really low, so I'm probably going to add little darts here, and then in the back as well, I have these two darts right here, and then obviously I need to finish my zipper, so that's kind of what we're looking at. The pattern, the sleeve for the pattern calls for one piece of the same fabric. I obviously didn't have enough, so I cut from another piece of scrap fabric I have, and then I made the seam and then I understitched it so that when this is folded over, it will pull that um, lining fabric to the inside. So now I'm just gonna attach it. So this is a cap sleeve, so it's gonna kinda look like this and it will fit to the bodice here. I'm gonna go ahead and attach this now and then I'll be done. And now we are ready for the final result. So as you remember from the beginning, 
denim skirt, probably early 2000s, I would guess. Inherited it from my grandmother. It's cute already, but I turned it into this and it's something I'm gonna wear a lot more. It's actually surprisingly comfortable. It's a sweetheart neckline, lots of darts for fitting. I got a really nice fit on it and I really like how cute it is and that it can be dressed up or down. And also, I mean, that it's my grandma's and that I can have it forever and think of her every time I wear it. So that is the refashion for this episode, episode 13 of Refashion Series. This is Carmetta again. You can follow me at Carmetta on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, all the things. And please subscribe and follow along if you enjoyed this and leave a comment if you have questions. Thanks, guys.